Let's do another um, potential near a charge distribution. Let's do potential near a charged disk. We're going to do it one just to see another one, but also the exam's coming. We want a lot of practice setting up integrals, solving integrals, be sure we know how to do this. So let, let's do one more. So the charged disk would look something like this. Great big disk, I have it sort of in the plane of the board. It's got a radius, we'll say A. It's got a charge density, sigma. And we want to know the potential on its axis at some point out here, at distance B along its axis. Okay. So let's see, how do we do it? Well, since we don't have a formula for the potential of a disk, we don't have the formula for the potential of a point charge, we break it up into a little piece of charge. So we say, remember, for the disk, you draw sort of two radii coming out like that. And you say, what I do is I go out to this radius, then I go out another radius. So I have a little thing this way that kind of looks like that. A little piece of the disk, right? So it's got dr this way. But then to make it, I also had to move around theta. We're doing this in polar coordinates. So you come around here to theta, and then you go to theta plus d theta. So this little distance here is r d theta. So our differential charge, dq, is just the charge density times this area. And this area is r dr d theta. That's how we usually say it, dr times r d theta. So we're going to take each of these little differential surfaces, little DAs, turn them into DQs, and just do our integral. So let's think about the differential potential, dV. Differential potential from this little thing, treating it as a point charge out to here, is Coulomb's constant, dQ. And here we talked about it. dQ is sigma, the charge density, times the element of the area, which is this times that, but we usually write it r dr d theta sigma times r dr d theta over r. Now, we're mixing coordinate systems. We have two different names for r, so let's not get mixed up. Whenever we use this simple formula, k q over r, for a point charge or a differential element, we're saying we're treating it like a point charge and we're thinking of spherically symmetric coordinate systems centered on that thing. That's what this R means. That's what this R we're about to put down here means. But we're also doing this problem in a coordinate system of a disk that has its own R sticking out. So sometimes in physics we, we run out of letters, okay? We're gonna kinda use R twice. That's why I'm actually being careful not to write an R down here, meaning how far you are away from this charge. I'm going straight to the formula that we need because I'm trying not to have multiple R's for different coordinate systems. That would be bad. Sometimes you would do it, you might write an R prime. Ugh, I'm not even gonna write that. So, but remember, whenever you deal with this little thing as a point charge, you're actually creating another coordinate system. Usually you create it, you use it, and you get rid of it. That's what we're gonna do now. There's a spherical coordinate system here, we gotta get to R, but we're not gonna call it R, we're gonna call it this distance. And what is this distance? Unfortunate place to write a B. There, it's a right triangle like that. So it's B, and what is this? This is R in the polar coordinate system. This is R of the disk. Okay, so this is the square root of R squared plus B squared. Again, we're only ever writing the R of the disk, of the thing we're actually integrating. The square root of R squared plus B squared. And you also have to be careful that R's and sigma's look quite similar. So let me <laughs> redraw a couple of R's and a nice curvy sigma. There you go. So sigma, R dr d theta, is the dq, and in the bottom, this distance is this from Pythagorean theorem, the square root of this little r squared plus b squared. Whew, there you go. That is pretty much everything. So now, let's do the integral. It's a two-dimensional integral. We need two, two integrals on there because we have to integrate over dr and d theta. So two sums. Let's see, so let's put the uh, theta on the outside. And the theta, we're going to integrate, start here, we're going to go all the way around the disk to be sure we capture all the little dqs. 
So that's going to be 0 to 2 pi. And the r to capture all the little areas, we have to go all the way from r equals 0 to r equals a. 0 to a. Okay. Now the ke doesn't matter much. Now let's go and keep it in here. Ke and the sigma, it's not going to do anything. Let's put the sigma right there. And then let's put all the r parts together. r dr becomes the square root of r squared plus b squared. And then the only theta part is just d theta. Okay. So we'll integrate this outside part first. If we integrate d theta, we just get theta. And if we evaluate it from 0 to 2 pi, we just get 2 pi. Depending on what books and notes you're reading, people might even show that integral. They might just say, oh, there's 2 pi. Right? If nothing changes with theta and you've got to go around, it just adds a 2 pi to the equation. So we could actually do that here. We'll just do that live. We'll say, oh, actually, this could go away. And you could just write 2 pi. I showed you the integral because, you know, I'm, I'm watching your back. Okay. So let's see. So now let's do the uh, r integral. This one we can do by hand. Let's see. V is, let's keep our constants out here, 2 pi ke sigma. And it's really the integral of r times, a, times r squared plus b squared to the minus 1 half. Okay. So you raise it to the plus 1 half, and you divide by that 1 half, which means you multiply by 2, r squared plus b squared to the 1 half. And then you also divide by the derivative of that, which is 2r. And you divide by the r, it cancels that r. You divide by the 2, it means you multiply by 1 half. Hey, those go away. Wait a minute. And you evaluate it from 0 to a. Okay. Let's see. And now, and all we've got to do is apply our limits. So the potential v is 2 pi ke sigma. And let's see, it's a square root of a squared plus b squared minus two terms, the square root of a squared plus b squared. And we plug in the a minus all this stuff again, and the square root of that's 0 b squared, so it's just minus b. Square root of b squared is b. Okay. So there's your potential um, off the axis of the disk. And like the electric field, this is another case where actually we've now solved it for any position on the axis. Okay. So we have a b here, and the b is right here. But if you want to say, what's the potential as a function of distance, you could call that the z-axis, and the b just becomes z. You, know, you could make a plot now of the potential as you move away um, from the axis. And just like the rod, in the rod problem, like Andrea Plan B asked, what if you move the point around? Here you could change this problem a little bit without having to do a lot more work. You could do a washer. What if it looked like this? What if it had a hole in it? Okay. What if the charge were just out here with some charge density sigma? All that would change is this. Instead of integrating from 0 all the way out to catch the charge, you just have to integrate from, say, r1 out to r2. So if that's r1 and that's r2, you would just change this. Integrate from r1 to r2. It would change the limits. It would still give you the answer. So a lot of times you set up the integral once, it can actually solve different kinds of problems. 